morning. Welcome to Ainsley News. It's Thursday, 13th of May. Today we're talking CPI and what it means for gold. Currently looking at 4.2% CPI, which is amazing. Amid all the speculation around inflation, last night the rubber hit the road with the release of the latest official US CPI figures. In the context of the US Fed seeking an average sustainable 2% inflation rate, the CPI print came in at a blisteringly hot 4.2% sending shockwaves through the markets. The April figure of 0.8% was the biggest jump since 2008. And the other key metric of core prices, which exclude food and energy, rose 0.9%, the biggest increase since 1995. Importantly too, the current CPI basket, which arguably is adjusted to suit, excludes how home prices, as it used to, now only rent. Rent, which accounts for a mighty third of the index, has only gone up 2%. House prices in the US have risen 18% in that last 12 months. It was a night of red amongst nearly all assets other than the US dollar. Shares had their worst night since the beginning of the year and even assets that usually benefit from such a print like gold and silver came off, albeit the lower Aussie dollar off a stronger USD saw pretty much no change for AUD metals from yesterday. Crypto too saw falls overnight. US treasuries are also dumped which saw yields spike, the 10-year almost kissing 1.7%, a long way from when they plummeted to 1.47% after the disastrous employment figures last Friday night. Such a spike in yields would normally see gold weakness, but has largely shrugged it off. You can see in the chart we're going to show you next, the last peak at the end of March, which is when gold bottomed. So why not this time? Because the key factor for gold is real rates, not nominal rates, not for Fed funds rate. Here's that chart here. Gold peaked last August from US 2063, and not coincidentally, the 10-year Treasury yield sat around 0.5%, an historic low. From there, the recovery and, recovery and reflation narrative saw US Treasury yields march higher and gold relentlessly fall to just US 1686, or $1,686 at the end of March, with US 10-year yields at over 1.7%. Real rates are the difference between nominal rates and inflation. Inflation was largely a fear, not an actuality. Last night was potentially instructive on the turn being in. You can see in this next chart the remarkable correlation between the gold price and real rates. Those two charts there following each other almost exactly. What is making this even more interesting at a time when shares are still at near record highs despite the falls this week is the real prospect of stagflation rather than just inflation. Stagflation is high inflation but lower economic growth. It's the abysmal double whammy. Fresh after the appalling jobs data, the chart we're going to show you next is screaming stagflation as a real prospect. Check this out here. But now you may well be saying, yes, well, bond yield will just keep going up. It's a two-way equation. Maybe. However, as we repeatedly remind you, to get where we are, the world has amassed a record amount of debt. The delicate or maybe impossible task before the central banks is to orchestrate sustained inflation to inflate that debt away, but without allowing the interest payable on it via rising nominal rates to get out of hand and quite simply not be able to service that debt and default. Whilst the CPI print is 4.2%, the Fed prefers the PCE deflator or personal consumption expenditure deflator, which is a measure of inflation based on changes in personal consumption. Looking using that measure, which is still sitting at 1.6%, comfortably below the 2% target. And hence they will continue to maintain their easy money program. That same program buys treasuries strategically and try to keep the natural bond market yields low. You can see what's happening. The PCE deflator is still at large and arguably the most reliant on the velocity of all this new cash in the system, which is still largely absent as people have been saving that money. That will inevitably change and there will be no heading back. The transitory inflation narrative will be dead. Let us leave you with the current reminder from data last night on the enormity of all this new money being poured into the system and again ask yourself how this will not lead to rampant inflation. For the US fiscal year to date, for the seven months to the end of April, the US government collected $2.14 trillion in taxes and other income and spent $4.075 trillion. That's 90% more than what they collected. And this is before Biden's latest stimulus measures. What could possibly go wrong? Precious metals are real money. Never before in our generation has that been more important. Well, thanks for listening to news today. Hope you enjoyed that narrative there. Remember ainsleybullion.com.au for all things physical, ainsleywealth.com.au for all things crypto, 
and goldsilverstandard.com. Built and backed by Ainsley with real gold and silver. We'll catch you tomorrow for more news.